My name is Brendan Lamb, and today I'm going to learn you how to make some of this awesome, succulent, very extremely juicy Chipotle cheddar link. So what I'm going to do is get all the seasoning that we got here. So we're going to pour some beer in here and dissolve as much of this as we can so we can get an even coating across all the meat that we're about to grind up. You can really use whatever beer you want. I'm a big fan of light beers in here, kind of porters and stuff. Make sure we mix it all up. Our milk powder needs to go inside here. Got about a cup for every 10 pounds. All right, let's break down this pork. Some lean beef. This is what we've already trimmed up from the briskets this last week and then got as much of the fat off as we could vacuum sealed and now we're going to use it. Keep your meat as cold as you can that way it doesn't break down and start to emulsify on you whenever you are grinding everything up. Then we got our fat. This is the hard fat of the brisket. Oh, lost a piece. Now it's time to grind. We are making sausage in the elements. So we gotta make sure and keep all this meat as cold as it can possibly be. Go right there. Make sure your meat is cold and your hands stay out of the freaking hole. There's a plunger here just in case the meat doesn't go down with your hands. You can stuff it down. But if you put your fingers in this hole, you're liable to lose them. And this is just our first grind. We got our fat, our beef, and our pork. Make sure we're using the hard fat from underneath the brisket, that hard fat that you get on the heel. And the reason we do that is because it's harder for it to render down, so it's a little bit more forgiving on the cook. If you use the fat that you would, you know, the, on the fat cap of the brisket, that's what people render down and use for tallow. It's a lot higher temp that has to be brought down for this, this other fat that we just not put in here. We got our first grind done, now we're gonna work on our second grind. Get all that meat in there. Beautiful. Now that everything is ground up the way we want it to, it's time to add in our seasonings. This is a Chipotle cheddar link, so here's our bits of seedless chipotles. Wait, is chipotle already plural? <laughs> They're like saying deers or sheeps. Also, as well as our chipotle, we're gonna do a bunch of cheddar. And now the fun part. Let's mix it all together. You're gonna mix until your hands hurt. You're gonna mix until your arms and your back hurt. That's when you know you're done. The meat and everything should be cold enough to make it to where it's hard for you to keep your hands in here for very long. I'm trying to take my gloves off here. This is about the consistency we're looking for. Put into a ball, see if it'll stick to your hand without closing it. Just looking for these nice little stringy fibers to start going apart. All right, put this back in the fridge. About 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And then uh, we'll stuff it. All right, everything's been kind of cooling down for a little bit. You try and keep as many air bubbles out of this as you can. And the way to do that is to meticulously stuff everything down in there by hand. Get a little bit of water inside the casing as well. Your casing should have been soaking at least overnight. Make sure you rinse off all the casings as much as you can. They all come pre-packed with a bunch of salt. All right, so the first, I like to leave this open a little bit so we can get all of the air bubbles out of this tube before the sausage starts coming out. There we go. Now we can pull some over, tie it tight. What are you doing in there? It's nice and smooth. You want to make sure that you're kind of holding your hand at an even pressure on this tube as you're guiding the casings out. 
and we'll do this a bunch more times. Just go and get over here at the end, make the right size, pinch it off. I always go down and I double up on the size. So there you go. We're gonna pinch it, give it a turn, go until it's nice and tight. Not too tight, you don't want it to bust. So you can see there's gonna be some air bubbles in there. We're gonna pop those as we go. Now we're gonna go opposite side, but you gotta bind them up on it themselves. Okay, we got them all nice and tight. This one busted. Oops. It's okay though, it happens. So we're just gonna go through down the line and find our spots that have air bubbles and give them one little pop. And it'll nice and sink in there. Dangle our toes and wait for the tide. Count the stars in each You don't want to use a knife on this. You would use something extremely small. There's normally a toothpick, a safety pin. Um, there's actually the tools you can <laughs> buy to do this with, but um, we don't have any of those right now, so we're using our giant skewers. Use a knife, that will make too big of a hole and you'll lose too much moisture whenever you're actually smoking the link. We have a whole lot of cheese in here, so as the cheese melts down, it's gonna fill in some of these holes that we've created. Now we're gonna get a cold smoke on these bad boys. They have been in the fridge overnight. We're gonna keep it at about 180 degrees maybe for just a little while. We're gonna hit it with an ice bath. Try and keep them at the back of the smoker here. Don't forget about the water pan. Sausages are on the pit. We are rolling about 180 degrees, which is kind of hot for a cold smoke, but it's okay. We're gonna let them go until they get about 135 internal. Uh, we're gonna hit it with an ice bath, which is going to help us with our nice crisp hop on our link, our casing, if you will, so we don't have a chewy casing. And then um, we'll bring it back up uh, to the serving temperature. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> That's the color we're looking for right here, fellas. If you could feel that, that'd be nice. We're about 135 degrees, so now it's time for the ice bath. Bitch, we're about 135 right now. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah, ice bath time. You just got a little bit of cold water, put some ice in it, let it cool down some. We're going to stop the cooking process on these immediately. Get them in here for about a minute, minute and a half, two minutes, whatever you think, just to let them cool down some. Okay, so now that we've done all of our grinding up, our stuffing, our cold smoke, our ice bath, now whole pieces of cheese that have not melted down or anything yet. So any of these little air bubbles that we have after this cheese melts down, hopefully it fills in some of these little crevices. Instead of cooking at 180 degrees, we're gonna put these back in the smoker at about 250. Um, it's not gonna take long, but we're gonna get this nice and crisp and hopefully melt in some of that cheese a little bit so it fills in some of our voids. We got our pit right about where we want it. We got our links nice and cooled down. So we're gonna throw them on one more time and get them ready to serve. Maybe 30, 45 minutes, tops. All right, we've been cooking pretty hot for a minute. Oh yeah, they're done, done as it comes. Sweet. This is exactly what we were looking for. Look at that color. Oh, damn. Yep. All right, let's give her a little cut up and see what we got here. Y'all can come get these over at Vic Harrow's Barbecue in Grapevine, Texas.